Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video we're going to be taking another look at the Minmatar Republic's Tech 2 battleship Marauder, the Varga. I love this ship to pieces and a couple of weeks ago I showcased a couple of fits that you could use to clear C5 core garrison sites and then refit for the Drifter Response battleship. Unfortunately, the combat demonstration that I showed in that had me using the Drifter refit on the core garrison site, so today I wanted to just jump back in and showcase that actual combat site with the correct fit. Anything to showcase the Varga in a video, basically. I love this ship to pieces. It is fast becoming one of my favorite ships in EVE Online and almost at the point where it's about to overtake the Hurricane. I don't know, maybe I need to fly a slate near in order to get myself out of that worrying situation where a battleship becomes my favorite vessel in the game. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video, please hit like on it, drop a comment down below letting me know what you think. Come join the Catskull Community Discord. It's linked in the description down below. You can use my referral link to get one 1 million free skill points in EVE Online, that's also down below, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and keep me making content like this, I've got a Patreon page, a PayPal tip jar, and a Redbubble merchandise store. All that said and done then, let's actually showcase the Varga properly in a C5 core garrison. If you want a detailed breakdown of the fit that I'm using for this core garrison on the Varga, then I'll direct you to the Varga video that I put out a couple of weeks ago. I'll try to put a card on screen now and a link in the description down below, assuming I remember. Otherwise, just search Captain Benzie Varga and you'll quickly find that video. Essentially, I didn't want to re-record it or, you know, just put it into the video again because that felt like wasting both my time and your time. Anyway, I've warped into the site at zero. You'll see that the first thing I do is launch the mobile tractor unit start to align myself towards one of those Orthrus turrets that are 70 kilometers away and then activate the micro jump drive. Excellent piece of equipment. I've now moved 100 kilometers across the, get, across the battlefield. Boom, I'm now right up in range of those three Orthrus sentry guns. The Emergent Sentinels and the Awakened Sentinels will find their way to me. Now, in this wave, those frigates are no trouble to us particularly. They are scrams and they are webs. That's not a problem because we've got Bastion mode on. We can't warp away or move anyway. We then have five cruisers, the Awakened Sentinels, these web. They do a little bit of DPS, but they're again, not a huge problem here for the Varga, especially in its Bastion mode. What we're going to focus on first of all then are the three Orthrus turrets, because these do actually hit pretty hard, and since we're not moving, they are going to be hitting us quite consistently. Fortunately, because we use the micro jump drive so early on, we are practically in uh, not optimal range, but we are in very good range to be hitting these, even with hail. So we're just going to punch those things really hard until they go down quite quickly. You'll notice that the tracking, the guidance computer that I'm using there, the tracking computer, is using the optimal range script at this point. Obviously, it doesn't really matter which one you use. I do this because it pushes the optimal range a little bit further, which helps you not be quite so far into the fall-off range. Um, and obviously, tracking speed isn't really necessary when you're going after stationary turrets. Once we move on to start taking out the Sentinels though, that's when we are going to swap that script. I do, I'm sure, there we are, yes, I do actually do that. Once the Emergent Sentinel frigates are in range, we're going to start using the EMP Smart Bombs as well. You'll see I've locked onto one of those frigates just to keep an eye on what their health is like. Um, and you'll see the EMP does start pulling those down fairly decently. You know, it's not a quick kill by any stretch, but it's good enough. And it means we don't have to bother actually locking onto all these individually and trying to hit them. You know, worrying about tracking of large projectile turrets, etc. So, you know, even though the large auto cannons do have okay tracking, it's still not good enough really to hit a fast moving emergent sentinel frigate. The Awakened Sentinels, though, you can see that with one tracking computer running a tracking speed script, no issues at all hitting those things. The Emergent Sentinels are about to go down on the next pulse of those EMP smart bombs as well. If you watch the overview on the right hand side, you'll see, boom, all of those frigates die at the same time, which I just love. That's such a powerful feeling. Anyway, other than this though, basically the first wave then, you've taken out the turrets, you take out those frigates once they're in range, we slowly work our way through the uh, remaining Awakened Sentinel cruisers and move into wave two. Now, Wave 2, or Reinforcement Wave 1, as it's sometimes known, is a little bit more tricky to handle. 
Once that last Awakened Sentinel goes down, we are spawning in three battleships, Sleepless Sentinels. These have the ability to both scram, web, and neutralize you. That is going to be an issue. Obviously, the scram and the web, not a problem because we're in Bastion mode, but the neutralization does hurt quite hard. We also have six frigates, Emergent Keepers. These are remote repping frigates that also neutralize, and the fact that there is six of them does a decent amount of neutralization. In fact, at the start of this wave, you theoretically have 72 gigajoules worth of, rem uh, of neutralization being applied to your ship. We are going to have to handle this quickly because if we're not careful, this will cap us out at an astonishing rate. Now, at this point, I go for the Sleepless Sentinels first. You'll see I've swapped back to the optimal range script, and I'm going to be uh, shooting there with my large auto, still using hail at this point in time. Load hail, never fail. And we're gonna start working our way through those Sleepless Sentinels. Once the Emergent Keepers are in range, we are going to use the Smart Bombs. So once they were closer than seven and a half kilometers, we start to Smart Bomb these. This time around though, you'll notice I have locked onto all six of them. That is vital because those emergent keepers are the trigger for the next wave. And if we accidentally kill all the emergent keepers with our smart bombs, we're gonna have three sleepless sentinels on top of the entirety of wave three. That is going to get us killed. So by locking on, I can see that there are a couple of those emergent keepers that thanks to the remote reps, are not about to die anytime soon. I've taken off four of those emergent keepers nice and quickly. Boom, we can turn off those Navy smart bombs now and know that we are now four reduced on the neutralization. Four of those frigates are no longer neutralizing us. Nice and straightforward. Here you can actually pull out your drones as well and see if those will pull down one of the emergent keepers. They're not particularly a good option for it. I don't always do this because I have a nasty habit of forgetting that my drones have been launched and then accidentally smart bombing my own drones into oblivion but it can be worth doing. Just obviously be aware that those sleepers are going to aggro your drones, they go straight away. One of my Hobgoblin 2s has been chewed up by one of those emergent keepers, um, and I'm now sitting on four Hobgoblin 2s, although while I was flying this, I didn't spot it until basically now when I've started to pull those drones back. First battleship is already down. It's pretty good clear times here for the Varga as well. Um, a lot of people talk about the Paladin being the best option for this, and it really isn't. The Paladin's a good all-rounder. The Paladin will do the sights fairly quickly and the Drifter fairly quickly. The Varga, in my experience, is the fastest to clear the core garrison sights, and the Golem is the fastest at the Drifter. The trouble is that the Varga doesn't do the Drifter battleship particularly well, and the Golem doesn't do the core garrison particularly well. It, they'll both clear them, it's just not as fast as the others. The, go the Golem really does chew through that Drifter response battleship very quickly due to how its torpedoes apply pretty much at full strength at that point, um, whereas the Varga still has to deal with the fact that you're never really utilizing the resistance hulls, um, especially on its large armor, which is electromagnetic. So the Golem does better against the Drifter, the Varga does better against the core garrison, the Paladin's sort of in the middle of those two, um, it does both of them well, but it doesn't do either as well as the other. It's kind of your jack of all trades master of that. Now here you can see we are now coming to the third battleship of this wave. The Emergent Keepers are still up. I'm going to have to bring my drones back at this rate because they're getting aggroed again and I'm going to end up losing more of my drones. Um, you could theoretically try smart bombing here. Looking at their health though, I wouldn't really recommend it. And the downside of those smart bombs is they use an absolutely monstrous amount of capacitor. I don't really want to activate them unless I need to. And the fact is both those Emergent Keepers are now remote repping each other up so you know i've kind of wasted a few hits of the smart bombs previously what i'm going to do is essentially wait until the sleepless sentinel is practically dead and then i'll start smart bombing those emergent keepers um, to trigger the next wave with the battleship dead, we move on to the Emergent Keepers. One of them's just been smart bombed into oblivion. The next one's about to go down in the next hit, I think. Might just survive. Yep, did survive, so it's got another one strike before wave three spawns. 
Wave 3, not too much of a problem. We've got five cruisers, Awakened Sentinels, these have webs. Three cruisers, Awakened uh, Keepers, these are scrams and webs with neutralizers. That becomes a problem. Scrams and webs, not a problem to us since we can't warp off anyway. And three battleships, Sleepless Sentinels, again with scrams, webs, and NOS. There's a lot of webs in this wave, a lot of scrams in this wave, and a fair amount of neutralization too. What I like to do here is just lock on to the Awakened Keepers. I do sometimes swap to Barrage for this if they spawn a little bit further away, but my positioning here is pretty good. They're pretty much in hail range. We can just work on the Awakened Keepers first of all. There's only three of them. They're neutralizing cruisers. Getting rid of them quickly just helps reduce the amount of neutralization we're taking and thus helps us maintain capacitor stability. After this, though, I'm going to go for those battleships, the Sleepless Sentinels. That said, though, those are the triggers, so we can't take all of them out just yet or we'll trigger wave 4, which would be problematic. You'll see that nothing here gets closer than 15 kilometers. We don't use our smart bombs here. There aren't any frigates or anything to worry about. It's just basically take out those keepers first of all to get rid of the neutralization, then start to wear down the sleepless sentinels to get rid of their neutralization. Once they are down to just one remaining, we take out the awakened sentinels. They are no threat to us at all. Um, and then finish off with the final sleepless sentinel. And to this point as well, I just want to address something that was said to me in one of the... I think it was the Paladin video. Yeah, it was the Paladin video. Where I said that the Paladin was the least... Um, the, the least overwhelming, the most underwhelming, I suppose is a better way of putting it, of the Bastion modules. And someone said, nah, man, that's clearly the Varga. And I sat there and I looked at this and I put them kind of in side by side comparisons. And the Paladin, the bottom just opens slightly and there's a bit of electricity comes out of it. And he was saying like, oh, you can't really tell if the Marauder is in its Bastion mode or not. And I'm thinking there at the Varga if it's in its Bastion mode or not. And I'm thinking, have you seen the Varga since the Viridian update? Because look at those fins. Those fins are normally jet black and solid LADAR arrays. Once it's in Bastion mode, they're lit up like a Christmas tree and they've got those additional panels on them. On the, the left port side of the ship, sorry, the left side, I guess you can say, but the port side of the ship. There's also a whopping great big... No, it's not. It's the starboard side. I'm looking at it right now. There's a whopping great big furnace there that you can see venting into space, which is so cool. And you get underneath the uh, helm at the front there, you have that long arcing beam of electricity. Now, look, the Paladin... I don't know. It just... It kind of... The bottom pops off and you get some lightning. I mean, it, it's not exactly the Golem. The Golem and the Kronos both look amazing when they're in Bastion mode. You can clearly see it's in Bastion mode. It's venting into space and it just looks incredible. The Paladin, I don't know. It just doesn't. It really doesn't. And that might be my bias against the Marship speaking, but... You know, let me know your thoughts. Which of the four Marauders do you think looks best when it's in Bastion mode? Is it is it the Varga with the fact that those fins come up, you get a furnace venting into space and the arcing electricity on the front? Is it the Kronos or the Golem that have the top open up and reactors actually go straight into space to vent from all sides? Or is it the Paladin where the bottom opens up and there's a little bit of electricity there? I don't know. M again, maybe I'm asking that in a biased way because I don't like Amar ships. But there we go. Another point just briefly to make on that whilst we're shooting things, I guess. A lot of people say, you know, oh, you hate Amar ships. It's like, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Amar player, sorry. Don't apologize. I don't hate Amar players. I just don't like the ships personally. It's personal playstyle preference, that's it. And I play it up a little bit for the content. I like to refer to the Amar uh, vessels and, you know, the Amarian people in the lore as God-fearing or God-bothering laser monkeys. But it's all in good fun, right? I'm not seriously telling you that because you're a Mar, you're an idiot or anything. No, if you like energy turrets, that's awesome. I'm glad you enjoy those weapon systems. They're not for me. I like launching thousands and thousands of tons of hot lead into the side of my opponent's ship, or essentially launching thermonuclear warheads at them. Basically, projectiles and missiles. Not a huge fan of railguns particularly. I don't know why I don't dislike them, I just don't really seem to use them. Lasers, I use more than railguns, but I just don't like them. Go figure. There we are. Anyway, so yeah, you can see we are now through the point where we have killed all the Awakened Keepers. We've killed two of the Sleepless Sentinels. That last Sleepless Sentinel we now have to keep alive. I'm just going to shoot these Awakened Sentinels till they're dead, and we're going to spawn in the next wave.
With that sleepless sentinel going down, we come into the fourth and final wave of this anomaly, this core garrison. We have three frigates here, emergent wardens with scrams, webs, and neutralizers. Two cruisers, awakened sentinels with webs, and two battleships, sleepless keepers with neutralizers. Now at this point you'll see I reload into barrage, I use the optimal range script, and I try to pop some of those frigates if I can, but I usually go after um, the battleships here first of all, just sometimes going after those frigates early with some of the, like look at that, look at that beautiful shot from barrage there, two shots and bang it's down. I'm gonna try that on the awakened sentinels as well. Doesn't really matter what you go after here. The maximum neutralization you're gonna get hit with is 33 gigajoules per second, which you can survive in this ship quite comfortably. So just kind of take out whatever, really. It doesn't overly matter. I personally think it's likely best to go after something like the, uh, the battleships first, just because they can theoretically do the most damage. Some people like to go after the frigates because of the scrams. Um, obviously, you can't warp out with bastion mode on anyway, but there is the point that if someone does come in and you can turn bastion mode off, at least you could then warp out. I don't know, it's kind of up to you. You'll see that once things start getting close, the emergent wardens I take out with uh, the smart bombs as usual. Uh, the awakened sentinels, I'm now shooting those just because why not? And the sleepless keepers are nice and far away, so I'll go into barrage again for those. It's I try not to reload too much, basically, I think is the point here. That if I'm in hail, I'll try and shoot the things that, you know, hail will hit, and then I'll change those later, but apparently not here. You can see I'm going after that sleepless keeper just to, you know, make sure I'm doing what I'm doing. 104 kilometers away from the mobile tractor unit as well. You'll see I've set an approach on that. There's theoretically two ways you can do this at the end of the anomaly. Ultimately, I'm going to need to wait for Bastion mode to cool off and allow me to warp away. Um, there we are, yeah, loaded in there now, barrage to go after that sleepless keeper. Obviously, you need to wait for Bastion mode to turn off before you can warp away. You can just warp off and then warp back in on your mobile tractor unit. Probably the smartest thing to do. But because I'm only 104 away from the mobile tractor unit, I sometimes just align to it and then use the micro jump drive and just do it quickly that way. It's quicker, but it's not as safe. Um, theoretically, you should be just, you know, using the warp in, warp out points. That's your best way of doing things. That said, though, I do also want to showcase here that because I'm so far away from those sleepless keepers, rather than warping to the mobile tractor unit, I'm actually going to align to those and use the micro jump drive um, to clear that distance. The awakened sentinel is far enough away at the moment that I'm not doing huge amounts to it. Boom, there we are. Now 113Ks from the awakened sentinel. If I go back into uh, the what's it called, into bastion mode there. I can start shooting those sleepless keepers and I'm in optimal range now with hail. God bless the micro jump drive, right? Allows you to range control if you're smart with it. Obviously, you need to be careful with it because you always move exactly 100 kilometers straight forward in the direction you are facing. So if you are mid a line and your ship is turning, you may not go directly to where you think you're going. Got to time it carefully, make sure things are okay. It's got a 10 second spool up time. So if you know it's going to take you eight seconds to align, you can kind of hit it and align at the same time. If you've got a 12 second align time and the 10 second activation, give it a couple of seconds of aligning before you hit that big red button. Otherwise though, folks, obviously here we are, final wave of the anomaly here. Those sleepless keepers are not doing anything to me. The awakened sentinels, not a big problem either. We're just gonna sit here and rip these ships to shreds, loot everything that we get from this. I got really lucky here. I was running this site and there was a server crash. The whole of Tranquility went down for a brief bit of time. Um, I was on the third wave at that point in time. When the servers came back up about 15, 20 minutes later, I warped back into the site my mobile tractor unit was still there, the whole site had respawned, and the mobile tractor unit still had all of the loot from the first, second, and half of the third wave in it. You get about 250 million isk for this site, so it is a pretty good site to run. Just obviously practice hull control, make sure things are nice and safe, maybe have some friends around you as well, um, just in case anyone does decide to try and jump you. But for the most part, pretty straightforward. Nice, easy site to run, 250 million a site. I actually got about 400 million out of this site thanks to that little glitch. But hey, that's obviously not gonna happen every time you run one of these. I kinda hope it doesn't happen every time you run one of these because that means the servers are going down constantly. But there we are. Anyway, that Awakened Sentinel is about to go down. I'm using the optimal range script rather than the tracking. Whoops. 
there should be using tracking speed script back on and start firing again at the wrong target because i'm an idiot anyway that is the core garrison showcased properly with the core garrison fit on the varga it's much faster at running it's about 15 to 20 minutes depending on your implants at this point in time significantly faster clear time good amount of isk per hour that you can make doing that yeah sure it's not c6 drifter uh, like rat in a uh, in a dreadnought or whatever but it's good it's good isk it's a three billion isk ship yeah it's expensive but if you can fly one of these things and there's a fleet of you guys clearing out these uh, c5s it's a great way to make some isk anyway folks that's everything for today drifter re uh, sorry core garrison fit actually showcased properly in action hope you enjoyed this let me know what you think of this what your favorite marauder is what are you enjoying in eve online at the moment remember i am up at FanFest at the end of september if any of you are heading up there to iceland i would love to say hi maybe share a pint let me know as well should i wear the captain's hat or should i just wear you know, a hat? happy sailing and see you in new eden